Hey my friend, welcome to my video comparing the Strymon Big Sky with the new Strymon Night Sky. And I've lost count how many times I've been asked in the past weeks, is the Night Sky better than the Big Sky? Which one should I get? Is the Night Sky replacing the Big Sky? And the short answer is no, the Night Sky has never been made to replace the Big Sky or be being a new generation. It's a thing of its own with many different controls than the Big Sky. Of course you can make them sound close and they have some of the same functions, but they are not made with the same goal in mind. The Strymon Big Sky is gonna be your all around reverb for all of your reverb needs and is more straightforward to use. The Strymon Night Sky, it's more to stretch the limit of what you can do with reverb and go more psychedelic and do some really weird things with your re reverb and experiment. So I'm going to compare some of the functions of each one and maybe it's going to help you decide what you need. So first of all, the Big Sky has 12 different types of reverb. I was playing with the cloud mode, but you have many other modes just like regular room, hall, I won't go through all of them, but it has 12 different types of reverb, so you have more variety in here. Plus, you have bank A, B, and C, and you go from bank 0 to bank 99. So you basically have 300 presets that you can recall very easily on this pedal. If you look at the Night Sky, it doesn't have all of the reverb types to choose from. It's basically more of a plate style reverb. You can you could consider that the texture are the types, so you have the sparse, dense and diffuse types. But that's it, you don't have that big choice like on the Big Sky here. It does have some presets, but you only have 16 of them compared to 300 here and it's not as easily accessible. It's the little buttons uh, that you probably have to use with your fingers to access. So the accessibility and choice of reverb types, it's really the Big Sky that is the winner here. But the Big Sky is more straightforward in the, the, the controls on it, right? So you have a tone knob that it's that is singular, you have a modulation knob, it's only one knob, you have a pre-delay, it's all the stuff that you want in a reverb pedal. But if you look at the night sky, the mod section, you have three different types of targets you can choose on it, you have six different types of shapes. So for example, if I come back on my first sound here, on the Big Sky, I just have this knob right here to control the modulation. So if I have none, it sounds like this. And then I can dial some in it. And I could put way more if I want. But for example, with the Night Sky, you have a lot more control on that. So yes, you have uh, the speed of the modulation that you can control, but you have the target. You can target the reverb itself. You can target the pitch that is controlled here that we'll talk about in a minute. So that's pretty intense, but this is something, still something that you can control. And you can even control the filter, target the filter with your modulation. Right, to get some kinds of filters like this. And then you have many different types of shapes. You have this one. have a random one and you have one that controls the envelope of the, the filter. So 
So you see, the goal of the night sky is to give you more control over all of the parameters so that you can really experiment and stretch the limits of your reverb. Sometimes that's going to sound weird, but that's kind of the goal with this pedal here. So for example, if you look at also the tone knob on the big sky, this is just one knob. Dark tone. Bright tone. But it's one knob. If you look at the night sky, you have a low cut. And you have a high cut. And you can even uh, have different kinds of filters that are regenerative if you want. Or a kind of low pass filter. So you can get even in synth territories when you get combinations like this. So that's pretty much the point of the night sky to give you more options compared to more straightforward here. And uh, if we compare, for example, the shimmer on it, I would give it to the big sky. The big sky wins on it. If I change to the shimmer mode, then here I can control two different intervals if I want. And I have all intervals in there. I could have a minor second. I could add a down octave. And plus one octave if I want. So two octaves. One down, one up. I really love this. But on the night sky, you don't have all intervals. You have seconds, fourths, fifths, and octaves, and some detune too, but you don't have all of the intervals like this one, and you have just one, not two. And both can be by the input or regen too. So uh, by the input, for example, is just adding the shimmer to the input. But if you choose the regen, you will hear that's going to gradually get brighter and higher as it regenerates into the reverb core. And that could be done both with the night sky and the big sky too, those two uh, shimmer types uh, right here. And on this one, you have some other functions that you don't have on the big sky. You have glimmer, which adds some harmonics in it. On the highs or on the lows. So let's hear the difference here. And you also have some drive to really put some, some kind of uh, distortion in there. So you can put it in pre-position or post. It sounds bigger like this, right? So these are options that you don't have on the big sky. And also, both of them have an infinite function, but it doesn't work exactly in the same way. On the night sky, you can just play any chord, press on infinite, and that's gonna stay consistent. And you can play something else. You could have the option of still having the reverb when you play on top, it's up to you. And on the, the big sky, it's pretty similar too, but now you just have to um, hold the switch of your patch. Oh, and now I have both at the same time, so this is just the big sky. So, in my case, I like it more on the night sky because you don't have to keep your foot on it the whole time. But what's really cool with the night sky is that you can hold it. And then you can access the sequencer, which is something that the Big Sky doesn't have. It doesn't have any 
looper or extra bells and whistle. This is just great reverb algorithms. But on this one, you could make a sequence and assign pitches like it's a synth almost. So that's something that the Big Sky does not have the sequencer. You could do so many great things with it and I made a complete video on the sequencer if you want to look at it on the Strymon Night Sky. So I think that the comparison here is not really fair because they are not made for the same thing. Here you have presets, you have more reverb types, you have straightforward controls, so it's all your reverb needs are covered with this pedal, but if you want to stretch it and go beyond, this allows for so many things. I find that on the Big Sky, it's just you twist the knobs and you find the sound that you want for your reverb. On this one, the, the knobs are interacting together more. So if I play something like this... You see a little bit what I mean? It's like the, the filters and the modulation and even the quantization options on the pedal all interact with each other, even with the shimmer, and you can create more with it because of that, because of the comp complexity of uh, merging all of those functions together to find new sounds and experiment with it. So, yes, the, 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 the long answer is that the Night Sky does not replace the Big Sky. It's something totally different. So if you just want beautiful reverb algorithms and a lot of flexibility and storage with your preset, go with the Strymon Big Sky. But if you like twisting knobs and being experimental and you, you want something more uh, psychedelic go with the night sky and the sequencer on it that is really really cool so thank you very much for watching my demo and if you watch all the way through it's probably because you are interested about reverbs and ambient guitar and playing those kinds of stuff that I've been playing <laughs> So if you like that stuff, I have a free course on ambient guitar chords. You could learn some chords that sound like this that will help you really play in that genre of music. If this is something you would like to learn, click on the first link in the description box and enroll in my free course titled Ambient Guitar Chord Structures. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, enroll in my free course and until next time, au revoir.